Guys, I will continue the development of my granules extruder. While I was waiting for the lathe to arrive that I had ordered for this purpose, I converted a cheap CNC machine laying in the corner of my workshop into a robot arm. With this I would like to test basic ideas for a 3D printer that I have in mind. The mechanics is composed of roof battens and 6mm threaded rods so that the whole thing can be built in an afternoon. Not only does it look cheap, it is cheap, however this robotic arm can move quite precisely. As a demonstration I am stacking nuts for 8mm bolts on top of each other. For the robot arm I have cut 3 roof battens with the dimensions 18 x 36 x 2000 mm in pieces. The arm length between joint 2 and 3 and between joint 3 and 4 is 30 cm each. Approximately. Joint 1 is 33 cm above the surface. Most of the dimensions were cut following the rule of thumb during the assembly, the master plan only existed in my brain. The joints are composed of pieces of 6mm threaded rod that rotate in adjustable bearings in the roof battens. First, three holes are drilled. The central hole has a diameter of 5mm and is therefore slightly smaller than the 6mm of the threaded rods and the two holes for adjusting the joint are slightly larger at 6.5mm. Now, a part of the roof pattern is cut off. The joint rotates in the central hole and the backlash of the linkage can be adjusted using two screws in the larger holes. A bit of wax can be applied as lubricant with a hot air blower if you are looking for particularly smooth joints, I did not use any lubricant with this robot arm. Even if the bearing is adjusted very tightly, the joint can still move quite smoothly. As you can see I used only one screw to adjust most of the joints, this works fine too. The robot arm has a total of 8 such joints. The joints are driven by the stepper motors and spindles of the cannibalized CNC machine. The press nuts are attached to a subframe made of roof battens. The same applies to the stepper motors and the ball bearings of the spindles. The two additional pivot points of the drive are necessary so that the lead screw and motor axis are always in line during the movement. The overall transmission ratio of the drive is ruled by the pitch of the spindles and the distance between the pivot point of the joint and the fastening point of the spindle. The closer it is to the pivot point, the faster the robot arm can move, the further away, the more precise and powerful the movement becomes. The joints can rotate a maximum of about 100 degrees. The joint rotating the robot arm is made of a piece of 10mm threaded rod to make the construction more sturdy. Here I have attached the press nut of the drive in a more simple way without a subframe. Simpler also means a bit weaker, the version with two counter bearings is significantly stiffer. Since the force on this bearing is rather low, the simple version also works quite well. But how good is quite well? To illustrate this I put a sheet of graph paper under the robot arm. The first test is to move the robot arm to the same point from different directions. It can be seen that the error left right for which the stepper motor rotating the robot arm is responsible is about 2.5mm... ...while in the forward backward movement for which the other two stepper motors are controlled simultaneously, almost no error can be observed. As shown before, the lead nut used for the rotation axis is mounted in a lazy way, which explains the difference in the precision of the axis. 
The problem with robot arms are the long levers that lead to high forces in the bearings and also mean that even the smallest backlash adds up to a large error in movement at the tip of the arm. As a second experiment, I therefore exert a force from different directions on the tip of the arm by hand, releasing the arm slowly. It can be seen that here too, the resulting error in the direction of the axis of rotation is larger at around 3.5mm... ...than in the forward-backward movement in which again almost no error can be observed. Obviously, I should have put more efforts in the design of the axis of rotation. But the best way to demonstrate fundamental weaknesses of a machine is to use poor designs. You can see the spindles wobbling, the spindles and stepper motors are not perfectly aligned. For pick and place tasks, this wobble doesn't really matter. It is important that one and the same point is hit exactly again when replaying a movement and that works even if the robot arm does not move linearly to the target point. I attach two servos to the tip of the robot arm. The standard servo ensures that the gripper arm can be aligned in parallel to the ground. While the small micro servo operates the gripper. With that, the nuts can be gripped and placed somewhere else. For simplicity, the nuts are placed by hand at the starting point. I just didn't want to spend more time in tinkering with an automatic feed. The drop point of the nuts is also the zero point of the robot arm, to which the tip has to be driven manually after switching on. The robot arm does not have limit switches. It was a really lazy weekend project. I have reused the electronics of the CNC as it was. It is an Arduino Uno with a CNC shield on top and the 12 and 5 volts lines of an old computer power supply are used to feed the arm with electricity. I connected the control lines of the two servos to the control pins for the milling motor. The Arduino no longer runs garble but a sketch written on the fly. A Python script is running on the Raspberry laptop that reads the point of movement for stacking the nuts from a text file. I have programmed the movements with the script and directed the robot arm to the target points using the keyboard. By pressing S on the keyboard, target points are stored in a text file which can then be replayed as often as required. The Arduino sketch and the Python script can be downloaded from my website. The robot arm is part of my series on physical computing, with which I would like to introduce the basics of machine control. As I said at the beginning of the video, the robotic arm is a rough test of ideas for building a 3D printer. I'm not going to attach a print head to a robotic arm, because that doesn't promise good results. Instead, I will implement the basic concepts of the joints shown here in a delta mechanism. If you would like to support me financially, you are welcome to click the donate button on my website. Many thanks to everyone who has already made use of it and so enabled me to buy a lathe. Hopefully, there will be a fundamental update to the granule extruder soon with that tool. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.